Thanks a lot. It was nice meeting you, Mark. How you doing? How are you? Good. I'm Jeff George. Jeff. Oh, you used to play football. I wish. I got the name recognition Sorry at any rate. No problem. Actually, it's nice and cool. <laughs> U.S. Connie Mack. Oh, you're running. Are you running under NFP? Yeah, I'm running. No party affiliation. NP, NPA, NPA. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you you get to get to go directly to the to the election without going to a primary. Yeah. We got a little easy this year. Yeah. Well, but actually, so does Connie Mack. There's no primary for him. No, oh, pri no, no primary no. for the uh, Democrat either. So. Okay. So. so it's a straight but some of the others year. I've noticed that. Yeah. You get a straight shot in. Well, it's nice talking to you. It's nice to meet you. Okay, the next group that will be up is the Fayette County Water Control District, and they will be followed by the Lee County Mosquito Control District. The East County Water Control District, it will go in this order if you are here. Damon Keller, Michael Welch, Desmond Barrett, Dewey Tyler, and George Duncan. Jeff, the young man that used to work Damon for the news Keller. press. Chuck. Chuck. Yes. He asked me for something. The order that you're speaking in. You'll go second. Hello, everybody. Larry Bird. Uh, Larry Bird's here. He's having a race. I don't know. This is just a sheet. It's not my checkoff list. So, uh, I think uh, you'll be at the top. Saunders are the only two. Yes. Connie is not here. Yeah, you two are in. So, uh, when, is, when is that coming up? Uh, we can go to the order of the but what I would like to say is thanks to all the people who have a great turnout. They're running a little late. We've got so I'm guessing we're coming up right now. We've got kids on the other side. We've got kids on the right here. And they might hear and show that we're on the map. It's kind of a... Put a check in. Okay. So uh, what we need to do is find a place for the for you to set up a tripod away from all the smoke and everything. And let me sit down and we'll just go ahead and shoot uh, everyone speaking. And then once, uh, shoot me, make sure you get Saunders. And then we'll go out and we'll, we'll rock around a little more and talk to some people. Yeah, Bert Saunders is here. No, it's just the two of us. So. Oh, oh, you talked to Ro, okay. Yeah, she said uh, after this group, uh, it looks like we're going up and it's just me. Dewey Tyler, Mr. Tyler here. Let's go ahead and hand the booth to Dewey. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set him up in the front. Dewey Tyler, you are in the control district. Well, this afternoon, I don't know. I don't And we will move on to the next person, which is Nathan Stout. Mr. Stout. I, I hope that since the other people gave up their time that I can spend 12 minutes talking instead. Uh, but I, I'm up for re-election this year. I've served two terms with the East County Water Control District. Uh, I'm very proud of the work that we've done. Uh, we've uh, reduced your taxes year in and year out almost every year. Um, one thing I'm very proud of, I'd like to have, just to quote somebody, uh, Jim Fleming, who is no longer with us anymore, but he was a fellow board member, and he once said, Nate Stout is the most conservative, type and tax cutter on our board. And I think that's a, a very good compliment, and I will continue to work and improve our infrastructure and keep your taxes down. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day. other things other than insecticides to use the treat mosquitoes. So that's always kind of followed with me. I was actually there for over a year. I actually uh, served as the director of the highest control at the promotion, which is also a sister organization of the mosquito control run by the same board of commissioners. 
and then I went off to med school, and what you may not also know is the veterinary oath, as you have to say as you graduate, says you will protect public health. You're not simply doing animal work, you're actually trying to protect public health. So all those things kind of put me back on mine to getting involved in the county mosquito control. And it's been a fun run. I think we've done a very good job in the seven years that I've been on the board. Six of those years, this is the eighth year. Six years, we actually did rollback, so your taxes went down. This year, we're not doing rollback. Because rollback this year means your taxes would go up. So be careful when you look at my district or anybody else. When they say, oh, we're doing rollback, because in the past, that's been a good thing. This year, it not necessarily is. Just so you know, our budget this year is less than $14 million. Uh, and we're, by not taking the rollback, we're saving $1.9 million from what we could have done uh, according to the county property appraiser, so this is sort of what we can go to. So we're trying to watch things. I've had, I've had two successful veterinary clinics here in, in Lehigh, so I'm trying to use some of my business experience to help in that regard, too. Uh, it's, it's been a, an honor to be a representative for eight years. I'm asking for one more term. I hope I have your support. I have all kinds of literature inside talking about diseases and repellents and things that are just kind of of interest and a little thing on my uh, requirements or my uh, background also. Anyhow, thank you very much. I feel like this is in November also. Uh, I'm not on the primary, so I'm going to get up today. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't believe there's anyone else here for the Mosquito Control District, um, but if there is, speak now. Okay, we will now move to the next group, which is the U.S. House of Representatives. It will go in this order if you are present. Mr. Larry Burns, Mr. Jeff George, Mr. Connie Mack, and Mr. Bert Saunders. Is Larry Burns here? Then we will move to Mr. Jeff George. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff George and I'm running for the U.S. House of Representatives here for District 14. Uh, I uh, actually live out in Cape Coral. Uh, I've been a resident here in South of Florida since I was four years old. Uh, currently, uh, I own a video production company. Uh, we've done a couple documentaries here and there. We recently did a documentary in Syria. I also work uh, a couple nights a week in the clinic here in Lehigh. And uh, it's really great uh, to be here and uh, actually in the daylight and to see all of you here uh, hopefully awake and uh, in your clothes. Uh, but. Everyone comes up here today, uh, everyone who's running against an incumbent. We come up here and, uh, and, and they say that uh, it's time for a change and that uh, we're, I'm going to be the candidate that's going to change things. The question that immediately comes to everybody's mind is, how do you verify this? How do you know that somebody who is running for office and says they're going to change things isn't going to do the exact same thing that everyone else has done before them? And that's what we're trying to address with uh, the way that we're running this campaign and the way that we're coming out and we're talking to all of you. Uh, if you look back here, uh, you'll see my good friend Damien back there on camera. And what we're doing is everything that I do and everything that I say for the sake of this campaign, uh, we, take, we videotape that and we make that available to you. The raw footage, every second of it, available for you to take a look at online. The idea is that we want to be as transparent as possible uh, in the way that we're doing things. We want to make sure that we are completely 100% accountable to you, the voters. And the only way that that's going to happen is if we all get more involved uh, directly in the, in the democratic process. Because the problem that we have right now is if you go up into Washington, uh, you look at the, the people that we have in Congress, you look at the people that we have in the administration, and you have to ask yourself, uh, are these people really representing my interests? And uh, I think for a lot of us, what we see up there isn't who we see in the mirror every day. It's not who we see on the streets every day when we go out and we talk to our friends and our family and our neighbors. And that's got to change. We need someone up there who's going to be willing to take on the big power brokers, to take on the special interests. And the only way that we can do that is we've got, we've got to find another way to conduct our campaigns. We've got to find another way to get candidates into office. Right now there's a lot of talk about who's viable and who's not viable for this race. And the big issue is not what the news press says, not what some pay, someone's campaign manager says. The big question is what you, the voters, say. And I hope uh, that this November, if you really want to make a change, that you'll work with me. Thank you. 
And next up for the U.S. House of Representatives seat is Mr. Connie Mack. Is Mr. Mack here? Not seeing him, the next person up is Mr. Bert Saunders. Thank you very much. I want to thank all of you for being here uh, this afternoon. Obviously, everybody's busy, and it's nice to see so many people that are interested in, in what happens uh, locally and at the national scene in terms of politics. I also want to thank the sponsors for putting all this together. It's, a, it's truly an honor for me to be here uh, asking you today for your support for my bid to be your next congressman. I've had the honor of representing Southwest Florida in political office for the last 22 years. I started off as a member of the county commission. I then ran for the Florida House of Representatives, and I'm now finishing up my 10th and final year in the Florida Senate. And it's been a, a tremendous honor to represent this area in Tallahassee. And I'm now looking forward to the challenge of representing this area in the United States Congress. I want to introduce two people to you today that are very important to me. My twin sons, Matthew and Jonathan, that are 13 years old. The reason that I wanted to introduce you to them isn't because they're cute, which they are, but it's because they are the reason that I'm running. I'm not running because I'm concerned about my future. I'm running because I'm concerned about their future. I'm concerned about the future of all the children in this country, because I think you'll probably agree with me that this country has been headed in the wrong direction for all too long. Now, I will tell you, I'm running against the status quo. If you're happy with the way things are going right now, you probably don't want to hear what I have to say. Congress has an approval rating of about 12%. And the reason there is such a low approval rating is because people are sick and tired of the gridlock in Congress, They're sick and tired of Congress failing to address the critical issues that are facing all of us. I want to ask you a couple questions. How many of you here are concerned about the high cost of energy? Does anybody here wonder why we have no national energy policy? Are you satisfied with the fact that Congress has failed to take a look at immigration in a, in a serious way? Are you satisfied with the fact that Congress has failed to look at health care, has, has failed to deal with the economy, has failed to deal with the foreclosure crisis that is crippling many of the families, especially here at Southwest Florida? Now I'll tell you, it's really interesting to me. Congress knows who is using steroids in national base and, and Major League Baseball. They've had hearings on steroids, but we have no energy policy. I wrote the energy bill for the Florida Senate, and we have a great policy here in Florida to deal with the future of energy in this state, but it's a national problem. So again, if you're unhappy with the status quo, again, I'm here to ask you for your support. Now, I made the decision to run for the United States Congress when I found out that my opponent doesn't live in South Florida any longer. My opponent lives in Southern California. But really, what cinched it for me was taking a look at my opponent's voting record. I'm going to go through just a couple quick things on that voting record. First of all, did you know that Connie Mack voted against legislation that would have directed the Commodity Futures Trading Commission to use this authority to stop speculators from running up the price of oil? My opponent voted against that. Did you know that he voted against legislation to prevent price gouging by gasoline companies and oil companies during an uh, energy crisis? It's hard for me to even imagine how anybody could vote against prohibiting price gouging. And also, did you know that he voted against legislation to provide tax incentives for the development of alternative fuels? And I can tell you he's simply doing this because he's doing the bidding of the big oil companies that have funded him so, so tremendously for this campaign. A lot of people want to know how I can win this race. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to win this race the old-fashioned way. I'm going to knock on doors. I'm going to ask people to uh, support me. I'm going to answer their questions. And I'm going to be very honest about what those answers are. You may not like the answers, but you'll get an answer. So again, I'm here to ask you for your support uh, in my bid to be your next congressman. You can find out more about my campaign at BertSaunders.com. I'll be here until 2 o'clock, and I'll be, be able to uh, answer any questions that you have. Again, thank you for your attention. I look forward to seeing you uh, when you come to visit me in Washington. Thank you. And next grouping up is for the Florida House. Thank you. Can you hear me? I am J.J. Giuliano, your candidate for the State House District 72. 
District 72 includes portions of Lehigh, Alva, Olga, Buckingham, up to DeSoto, and parts of Charlotte County. I've lived in Charlotte County. I've lived in Charlotte County since 1985. I work as a healthcare professional as a registered nurse since 1983. I understand the needs of the everyday working people. And it's been 10 years since voters had a choice on a general election ballot for who they want to represent them in District 72. It's been 10 years since a Democrat was on a general ballot. And it's about time to elect one once again. It's time to hold our state representatives accountable for the votes and the actions that they do. I am running to unseat Paige Kriegel, and it is time for a new direction in Florida. It is time for solutions and how we can bring down health care costs, homeowners insurance costs, how do we get better wages and more jobs into our area. Unfortunately, Florida has converted to a low-wage, high-cost state, and that makes it difficult for people to live here or to retire and move here. It's time for solutions on how we can bring money into Florida other than cutting and slashing of public education of the state agencies that serve the least among us. It is time to stop the food fights up in Tallahassee and get something done for the people. I am a nurse. I will go to Tallahassee and bring people first. Not corporations or special interests. I'll fight for the kind of economy that provides jobs, healthy communities, and one that you can be proud of. I'm over here. Please come over and visit with me. I'll be glad to talk with you. Thank you. Vote J.J. Giuliano, November 4th. Mr.
get back. Yeah. Frank, how you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Good. Best of luck. Great. Great work. <laughs> got to sign what you got, you know? Who's this? Man, have you ever heard of him? Okay. I'm off to I've been on your I've been on your website. Somehow on Facebook. Uh, so what do you think? Good. Um, I'm running for public defender. Uh, Angela Cicero. Yeah. Yeah. She used to work in my office. Oh really? Yeah. She's doing a great job over at GCU getting some stuff. How's the race going? How big, how big an area is it? All of Lee County, uh, most of the populated area of uh, Collier, except for Golden Gate and Lafayette. Uh, and it's a little sliver of Charlotte, part of Port Charlotte. We're dealing with almost. I've got the whole market plan. Charlotte, Blaytown, Julie, and Collier. For whatever reason, we're meeting and drive an hour and a half each way. Yeah. And I don't know what you get there. It's, these things are kind of fun. Yeah, no, it's great. I, I know I have a problem with a, a lot of volunteers from around the district. They're like, yeah, I want to come to your meeting, but you know, it's kind of a lot of gas. Well, am I going to drive people? Most of my people are. Gary's playing games. So, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. But anyway, it was good meeting you. I wanted to nice introduce you. myself. Good luck. You too.
luck to you. Good luck to you, too. Nice meeting you. Detach here. I said get ready to detach. Let's go talk to Brett Saunders. Is he? Okay. Hi, how you doing? Good. What party are you running? No party. No party. Please move. How do you feel about offshore drilling? Bad idea. Uh, we, lost, we lost my vote. Well, the amount of oil that we're going to get out of the Gulf of Mexico is a fraction. It's not going to affect prices. Oil prices went down. And gasoline prices went down. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's mainly being driven by speculation right now more than anything. It's basically it's the same scandal that, that Enron ran uh, in California early in the decade. It's the same as far as drilling in the Gulf Coast. No, it's, it's a bad idea. Sure Number one, all it's going to do is increase our dependence on oil. It's going to keep the addiction going a little longer. Uh, number two, the amount of oil that we're actually going to get out of there, it's, it's a fraction compared to our usage. Uh, it's maybe, at best, it's maybe 500,000 barrels a day out of, uh, right now we use nearly 11 million barrels a day in this country. I like they're bringing barrels up anyway. Right. You know, right. For what, the chance to destroy our beaches, destroy our water, our wildlife? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. You know, basically this has been on the wish list for the oil companies uh, for the years. last 20 years. And now they're using the fact that the oil prices are spiking largely because of what they're doing in the, in the industry as, a, as an opportunity to sell people on this. And now we're going to pay the price for it. And then killed the electric car. And that's my biggest concern. You know, if we start drilling in all these places, it's going to lull people into that false sense of security. Yeah. Again. And that oil is not really going to be good for us to use for how many years before we can actually start utilizing exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, we're looking at four or five years before they start pulling anything out of the Gulf. And then you're going to build new refineries. You're going to get them up and running, and that takes years and a lot of money. There's going to be another way. Or they could just bring the refineries we have now actually up to capacity. Exactly. You know, that's one of the things that's interesting is normally oil refineries very rarely run below 95, 96% capacity. Sometimes in the spring they'll retool and they'll bring them down to about 9% capacity. Last, the lowest they were in a long time was they ran around 81% capacity when Katrina and uh, uh, Rita went through. Right. Uh, as of April, they were running at uh, 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 like 84, 85% capacity. What they're doing is they're dropping refinery production to spike up the prices. And they take a loss on the refinery operation, but since it's ExxonMobil and it's BP and all those companies running the refineries. Well, they're just after the dollar for their, for their people that, you know, buy stocks from them. Exactly. You know, well, that's, that's all they're after. You have to make me money if I invest in here. Mm -hmm. That's make billions of dollars in profits. What are they doing? What are they doing with that billions of dollars? Why are they not building more refineries? Why are they not doing more research to find where they really can get the oil? You know? Yeah. No, it's, well, we need to get away from the oil. We need, uh, we need to start working on real solar. renewable. Why not solar? Exactly. Why not make solar more affordable for the everyday normal people? And you know, one of the things that we need to fix in Congress right now is the, uh, uh, solar, uh, the, the solar rebate is getting set to expire, and they keep trying to get booted up, and it keeps getting booted back. So uh, the, the $8,000 credit for, for solar investment is going to be gone at the end of this year if we don't do something about it. All right, so we'll just throw it out, forget it even happens, and we'll do nothing about it. We'll shut our eyes for another 10 years, and maybe we have no oil. And we're only getting imported oil where it's costing us astronomical amount of money. That's when they'll finally do something. By then, it'll be too late. We'll be way too dependent on foreign oil. That's why we got to get some decent people in office this year. This is the year to do it. Thank you. It was nice much. meeting you. What's nice your name? Meeting Cindy. Joe, nice to meet you. Where did Saunders go? Oh, there he is. <laughs> I'll try to get it at a good angle for you. What a little fun we have. Hey, 
how you doing? Good. It's good to see you good. here. Nice to see you. Get your picture. No party. No party. Running as an independent. Please. That's the other thing I have to do is, you know, I have a natural aversion to free. And that's so critical. 